Good morning, St. Paul's. Thank you for that. That is glorious. For those of you who are joining us electronically, that all that joyous noise you heard were all those who have come and gathered together safely here this morning. <clears throat> Welcome to worship on this fourth Sunday that we are gathering electronically and now many in person. Welcome to worship. Do we have any announcements? Um, I am currently updating the church directory, so if you were not in the last one, if you have moved, changed a phone number, dropped a home phone, changed your email address, got an email address, if any of your contact information has changed, please drop me a note, leave me a voicemail, send me an email, because some of the emails I've sent out have gotten kicked back as no longer active. So I'd like to have good contact information on everybody. There are some forms, if you happen to be here today, there are forms at the back of the sanctuary that you can fill out and just leave with me and I will put that information in my database. Thank you. Also, the tidings will be published this week, so if you have anything that you'd like to go in the tidings this week, and if, in fact, if anybody has a great recipe that they'd like to share so that Nina doesn't have to continue to come up with creative recipes. If any of you have a recipe that you'd like to share, please have it to Nina by Monday evening, by close of business on Monday, because she's publishing on Tuesday. Yes, Sarah. Hi, I do have an announcement. Um, an organization over here in Easton, the Public Library, isn't open, but we are doing a virtual Scholastic book date. And the instructions on how to get there and do that. And there are some classes for adults in there. Uh, we'll be in we'll be in the tidings. So nine I guess you That'll go in the tidings. Thank you. Anybody else? Any other announcements? All right. Let us continue with our sharing of joys and concerns. We would like to remember Jill Covert as she continues to deal with medical issues, continued healing for Dolores as her knee heals up. Yay, Dolores. Who is here this morning, yay! <laughs> Prayers for all of those who will be going back to school in the fall, maybe in person, maybe not, but all of those who will have to go through the struggle of figuring out how they're gonna do classes, and for all the teachers who are having to go through that. Are there other joys and concerns? Sarah. Um, Bob Jordan. Okay, so Sarah and Charlie's son, Bob, and his fiance, Jordan, are in town, and both of Charlie and Sarah's daughters are having birthdays this week. They closed the bars in Texas. They haven't done much else. Okay, so prayers for Miss, Miss Vicky, who's having some foot issues, and her son was in a car accident. He's okay, but the car is not. And prayers for family members who are in some states that are now becoming major hot spots. Alvina. Okay, prayers for Jim and Alvina's grandson who turns one year old today. Amazing. It's a little miracle baby. Mm -hmm. yes. Nancy. Nancy. Yeah, first of all, a praise. Um, I can't believe my sinus surgery 
well, the college was not on campus, and I can play it again. Yeah. Um, and also, again, with everyone else, my daughter's in Florida, and uh, they just I've tried to shut it down some of the portals that the military could not leave the base, different things like that. And she works at Chili's, um, but she just graduated with an associate's with honors, and this is a child who had fallen and had brain injury, and she has now graduated her associate's degree with honors. So God can do whatever He wants. Yes. All right. <laughs> Several prayers of celebration from Nancy. Any others? All right. And prayers for the people in Houston with respiratory problems. Apparently, a dust cloud that has blown over from the Sahara Desert is limiting and shrouding the city. Down there. It's a less than a mile. Okay, prayers for the people in Houston who are being afflicted with a dust cloud that has immigrated from the Sahara Desert. Light your candle. Oh, sorry. I just lit this one over she here. Lit the, he lit this I just one. lit this one, Sarah. It's downstairs. Okay, the opening hymn. if there are no other prayers, then we will continue with our opening hymn. Now for those of you who are here in person, if you would join me in our call to worship. How long, O oh Lord? How long must we hold on to this pain? How long will the aches of our souls have power over our hearts? How long must we bear the weights of worry, of guilt, of sorrow? Move beyond the past that holds us captive. We will move forward despite the scars. May God's steadfast love Heal our spirits. May God's steadfast love help us discover the road to salvation. Let us sing with renewed voices. Let us sing of divine generosity and love. And now let us pray together. Holy One, in whom we bear our souls, we, we take, take comfort and courage in your presence. presence. Through your love and light, we are able to explore what it takes to place our trust entirely in you. Help us lovingly put you before all else as we journey the corridors of uncertainty, knowing that your steadfast love shepherds us on paths unknown. We give thanks for your love and grace that sustains and guides us. Amen. Amen. Our scripture this morning, hopefully, is a familiar one. It comes from the book of 1 Corinthians, the 13th chapter. If I speak in the tongues of mortals and of angels but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions, and if I hand over my body so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. 
For love is patient, love is kind, love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. And now faith, hope, and love abide these three, and the greatest of these is love. Today is the final in a series of sermons that Nina and I have preached over these past four weeks. The first week, the message was about living peace, not peace as simply a lack of conflict or war, but peace in the sense of harmony and wholeness amongst the whole created order. The second week, we focused on living our faith, not talking about it, but practicing it walking it every day. And last week, our focus was about hope. Not just in the sense that we hope for this or that, but hope as expecting something new in our lives, a new gift from God, expecting the fulfillment of our hopes and our prayers by God. And today, after peace, faith, hope, is love. Love, the greatest of these. You see, peace, faith, hope, and love are all central to our lives as Christians. But they are also gifts from God. And as gifts, God expects us to live and to use these gifts in all, all that we do, in all that we are, in all of our relationships with one another and with the whole created world order. We're all familiar with this morning's scripture. It's particularly used in wedding ceremonies to express the love between two people in a marital relationship. It presents the ideal image of love, love that is patient and kind, not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. It sounds rather idealistic, doesn't it? It sounds almost perfect. And truth be told, friends, it is ideal. It is a description of perfect love. And it's also for us a roadmap of how God intends for us, not just for people entering into a marital relationship, but for all of us as people of faith. It is how God intends for us to live out love in our lives, not just in relationships with a spouse, a partner, or a significant other, but in relationship with everyone, with each and every member of the human family. I chose this scripture this morning because in the words of the Beatles song that some of you may be familiar with, simple as it may sound, all you need is love. All you need is love. All you need is love, love. Love is all you need. Hit it, Sarah. <laughs> All the world needs is love, for love never ends. The Apostle Paul understood that that peace, even the peace that passes all understanding, faith, even rock-solid, undeniable faith that with God all things are possible, and hope, the hope that that with God we can expect the fulfillment of our hopes and prayers. None of these are ultimately possible for us and for the world without love being at the heart of who we are and of what we do. For love overcomes hate. Love conquers fear. 
Love breaks down walls and builds bridges. Love sees the other as our neighbor and causes us to act like good neighbors. Love understands that all are created equal in the sight of God and that we are all siblings in the human family. Love sees that we are all related and as one suffers, we all suffer. And surely, friends, these days, love is what we and the world need. Why is it so hard then? Because too often we are impatient and unkind. We are envious and boastful and arrogant and rude. We want our own way on our own terms. We are irritable and resentful. Too many times we rejoice in wrongdoing and injustice, or we choose not to speak out against it, rather than speaking and acting. In the words of the Burt Bacharach song from the 60s, what the world needs now is love, sweet love. One day a little puppy took a walk around his master's farm. A new little pup had come and joined the farm family. When he came to the pen where the horse was fed, he heard the great animal call to him, you must be new around here. I haven't seen you here before, the horse cried. You will soon find out that the master loves me more than all the other animals here on the farm because I carry large loads for him. I suspect that an animal of your size is of practically no value at all to anyone. The little dog hung his head and was about to walk away when he heard the cow in an adjoining stall say, I have the most honored position on the farm because the lady makes butter and cheese from my milk. You, of course, little dog, provide nothing of value to the family. Cow, your position is no greater than mine, called out the sheep. I lend the master wool to make his clothes. I provide warmth to the entire family. You are correct, however, about the little dog, the sheep concluded. He gives nothing. One by one, the animals, all the farm animals there on the farm, joined in the conversation, telling about their honored positions on the farm. The chicken told how she produced eggs, and the cat, for her quickness, how she rid the whole house and farm of mice. All the animals did agree on one thing, though. The little dog would provide no service of value to the farm family. Stung by the criticism of the other animals, the puppy found a secluded place away from the rest of them, and he began to cry. An old dog heard the sobs and came and found the little puppy and paused to listen to the little one tell his story. They are right, he sobbed. I will provide no service to anyone. I will be of no use. It is true, the old dog began, that you are too small to pull the wagon and you will never produce eggs, milk, or wool. You will never chase away mice. But it is foolish to cry out about what you cannot do. You must use the gifts the Creator gave you to bring laughter, cheer, and love. That night, when the master came home exhausted from long hours in the hot sun, the little puppy ran to him, licked his feet, and jumped straight up into his arms. Falling to the ground, the master and the puppy romped in the grass. Finally, holding him close to his chest as they lay there on the ground, patting his tiny head, the master said to him, no matter how tired I am when I get home, I always feel better when you are here to greet me. I wouldn't trade you, little pup, for all the rest of the animals on the farm. And the greatest of these is love. You see, love is not always 
in great and grand gestures. It's often in small, seemingly insignificant actions that love has the greatest impact. It's the kind word spoken to a stranger. It's helping someone load something heavy into their car when they are struggling with it. It's really listening, listening to another vent about their frustrations and anger about something, even when we don't agree with what they are saying. And love is speaking out against injustice when we see it and hear it. It's calling out even our friends and our family when they make racist, sexist, classist jokes that tear people down and make fun of them. It's walking in the streets with sisters and brothers. I leave you this morning for, with the words of a song from a, by a friend of mine that says, love is not a word, it's a deed, it's what we do. So make a better choice to do what love is telling you. Friends, the world needs us, needs us desperately in these days to be lovers. Our neighbors need us to be lovers. Yes, the world needs peace, the world needs faith, the world needs hope, and the world needs love. But the greatest of these is love. May you be blessed and be strong and of good courage as you live and love in all that you do and all that you are and to whom all you meet in these days. Amen. Please join me in prayer. God of peace, God of faith, God of hope, and God of love. We come before you in celebration. Celebration of the miracle of birth, celebration of the gathering of family members who we have had to stay distant from, celebration for healing. Gracious God, we thank you for all of those here today that we are able to gather and do so with great love. We pray for continued healing for all those who suffer, for those who even many days and weeks after an initial diagnosis continue to suffer the effects of this virus. We pray for those who are in places where it has made a resurgence, that they will be safe. Gracious God, we pray for our government leaders, that they will see the wisdom of medical advice, that they will understand that science matters. Gracious God, for all of the protesters who are out working to make others understand that until the lives of all matter, then the lives of one or two cannot matter. Loving God, we pray for 
safety for all of those who will be traveling this coming week. That they will go and come back safely. We pray for all of the medical staff that they will be safe, for the first responders, and for all of those essential workers who have kept the world turning during this time. Gracious God, we ask that you will hear now the silent prayers of those who offer them to you. Lord, when your son walked the earth, his disciples came to him and said, teach us how to pray. And so many times down through the centuries, we have heard that same request, teach us to pray. Teach us to come before God. And so Lord, we ask that you hear now the words that your son gave to his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy Thy kingdom kingdom come, come, thy thy will be done, done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give give us this this day day our daily bread, bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power forever and ever. Amen. And now as we prepare to celebrate the Lord's Supper, does everyone have a cup? If you do not, raise your hand. Charlie will bring you one. For those of you at home, I hope you have something prepared to celebrate this Lord's Supper. We remember that it was at the very end of his life that Jesus was gathered together with his disciples and his friends to celebrate a meal. But this table and this meal stands always in our midst as a sign of God's unending unabounding love for us and it empowers us to go and be lovers in the world when they were gathered there together that night Jesus took some bread and he blessed it and he broke it and he gave it to them to eat saying this is my body which is broken for you take eat and remember me In the same way, after their meal, he took a cup. Again, he blessed it, and he gave it to them to drink and said, This is the new cup, this is the new covenant in my blood, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you drink of this cup, do this in remembrance of me. These are the gifts of God. They are given for we, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen.
Go now in the peace of Christ, living our faith, hoping for all things better, with great love for all those you meet. Let us all go in peace. And now for those of us who are here, if you would simply stand where you are, we will sing, Let There Be Peace on Earth. until we see each other again. <laughs>